Hi, Thomas from Field Tennis. Moving to a short ball may not seem very difficult at first glance because we obviously move forward way better or more natural than we move backward. So you might see moving backward is challenging, so in a way it is. But moving forward doesn't seem too challenging and yet players oftentimes don't end up in a good position and they are not able to hit a good shot. When you have a short ball, you have a short ball, you now have an opportunity. So let's say from these balls that are about this deep or short, you have an opportunity to create an angle or to pressure your opponent or something like that. And with the balls that are even shorter, you actually have an opportunity to finish the point. And so these balls are the balls of opportunity. And unfortunately, it happens that when players move to these short balls, they are not in a good position. They did something wrong with their footwork or with their body rotation, as you will see in a minute. And so they end up on a short ball with an opportunity in an awkward position and they cannot pull their shot off. So today I want to show you the typical footwork patterns for moving to the short ball so that once you get to the short ball, you're in a very good position and you can hit a really good shot. The reason why I place four balls on the court is because we can roughly define two types of movements to short balls. So to these two first ones, I would call the movement is just adjusting. So we are not really running to the ball, but we are adjusting, assuming that we are playing in a neutral position about a meter behind the baseline. So we're playing from somewhere here and then we receive a shorter ball from our opponent. So we're, we don't really have to run for it, but we just need to adjust. So we just adjust a little bit and we play a shorter ball like that. And the balls that are there are usually really short balls when we stretch our opponent and they're like this. Or maybe they play a really bad drop shot or something like that. And so the ball bounces in the service box and now you have to move to the ball and you're hitting the ball somewhere here. And so this one is more running to the ball, so you're running on a short ball. You have to run, otherwise it's going to fall down. And on these types, we don't have to run, we just have to adjust. The other reason why I place four balls and I'm not showing you separately forehand and then separately backhand is because the footwork patterns are basically the same. And so if we first take a look at the short ball and I'll show you first the correct footwork pattern and then I'll explain what usually happens. So the correct footwork pattern on a short ball, if I'm in the middle and I have to adjust, is turn, step and shuffle. And once I'm here, I can play the backhand. You can do the same on two-handed backhand because you're always turning. You turn, you step, you shuffle and then you play the ball. Same on the forehand, turn, step and shuffle. So as you can see, the, the footwork pattern is always the same. And because I get the turn out of the way, so I turn, the turn kind of pulls my leg forward. So I always initiate with the upper body. So I turn forward and then I just adjust with one shuffle and I'm in a good position to hit this ball. So a typical mistake that happens on these shorter balls, not super short, but a bit shorter balls, is that players don't turn because they're a bit in a panic and they just want to get there before the ball bounces the second time on the court. And so what happens is that players just run straight to the ball. So their body is towards the ball and they have not turned yet. So they just kind of, the players here, they share a short ball. They run like this. Then once they get to the ball, they realize, oh, now I have the whole backhand to make. So similar on the forehand, they see a short ball, they go like this, just run to the ball, the racket is still in front of them. Now they get here, who knows in what footwork position, and now 
they need to execute the whole forehand in a very short amount of time. And so that's why I usually say I teach, I say get the turn out of the way. So get this out of the way. Now you're fine. Now you just one, two. And then the rest of the stroke will just happen while you're moving to the ball. So what's the best way to practice moving to a short ball? Well, actually like this, because we do a lot of footwork training. If you look at clubs or academies, a lot of footwork training is done just without hitting the ball, sometimes even without holding the racket. So can, players can just focus on their feet. And so what you can do, you can just put the ball down and then you just focus, you're programming yourself a little bit. You just focus, okay, I turn, step, and shuffle. In my view, it's important to have a ball or have a target because the ball will define the length of your steps because you must adjust to something. You cannot just do steps blindly and, and expect that you will position accurately to all sorts of different balls. So it's good to have a ball there. So when you're looking at the ball, you are then judging how big your steps need to be and you can change the ball position a little bit and see how far you can get. So you can try, you can put the ball here and then you say, let's see if I can get to this ball with this footwork pattern. Can I shuffle comfortably? And I say, yes, I can actually get to this ball comfortably from here. And I can try and challenge myself and see how far can I get with basically a step and a shuffle and that somehow you will know when you're playing tennis, like your brain will know, you will not think about your feet, but your mind will know which footwork pattern to use for a certain situation on the court. So I would suggest that you practice this, let's say for a couple of minutes, two, three minutes, you can also mix it up and you do go one time to the back end, and then you go turn, step and shuffle, forehand, you go back, you can split, then you go turn, shuffle, you go back, split, turn and shuffle. So I know it looks very simple when I'm doing it, but you may realize that this footwork pattern is not familiar to you. So if it's not familiar to you, then you will look a bit more awkward and you have to repeat so that this movement becomes very smooth. The other type of short balls is when you have to run to a short ball. So if the ball is this far and I would turn, if I would turn like this and then I would have to shuffle, I would never get there. So I have to run. So when I have to run, initially I don't want to turn, I just want to run. So because I will run like this the fastest, I will cover the most ground in the shortest amount of time. So I have to run. Now, what typically happens when players have to run is that they just keep running to the ball. So they run to the ball. And now again, they are not prepared for the stroke. So then they have to execute the whole stroke in a split second. And this one is a bit tricky situation because it does require some coordination because what the correct movement is, footwork and preparation is that while you're moving to the ball, you have to implement your turn. And so initially when I start running, I am just running and then somewhere along the way, I have to start turning. So even though I'm still making steps, I will start turning. So I would move typically to this ball like this. So as you can see, I start running and I'm not preparing yet. I'm just running first two, three steps. I'm running and now I'm starting to prepare my backswing while I'm running. And this one is not so easy. So that's why it's really good that you practice that, you kind of figure out how do I smoothly incorporate preparation and a bit of a backswing while I'm running to the ball, like into my footwork. So on the forehand, again, I would start running 
like for two three steps I would really focus on accelerating towards the ball and then along the way while I'm running you can see that I'm starting to prepare my forehand so this is let's say from coordination point of view not easy and that's why it's good to practice In summary, what I'm showing you today is not a tip that you can say, okay, I understand it, and then you can go play a match and you can implement it. It's never like that with footwork. Footwork always has to be practiced. If I give you a tip on where to aim on the court, then you can actually implement that today. You just say, okay, I understand, I know where to aim, and you can go and experiment that today and you can be successful. If I tell you how to move to a short ball, you cannot implement that in today's match. You actually have to practice so that this footwork pattern is somehow stored in your subconscious and then it will be just recalled out when you need it. And what I recommend you do is that you just place the balls like I did and record yourself how you move to the ball when the ball is dead. It's just waiting for you there. It's not moving. You don't have to think about your opponent. It's not flying towards you from some different angle. And so the ball is there it's waiting for you, it's dead. And then record yourself how you move to the ball and then see, do you move to the ball like this? Or are you able, when you have to run, are you able to incorporate your backswing, your preparation and backswing into your movement towards the ball in a very smooth and continuous manner so that when you end up at the ball, you're ready to hit. And if you're not, doing that really good on a dead ball then for sure you will not do it well in a match situation when it's 5 all 30 all and you get a short ball so if you're serious about your tennis do spend some time practicing movement patterns to a short ball either to just adjusting to the ball or running to a short ball and you will see that in time your movement becomes much smoother you will end up in a good position with plenty of time before you hit that ball and that will obviously show also in the results of your shots. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe and stay tuned for more videos from Field Tennis.